up everybody this is the Jedi I told you guys that to be expecting you know that you would probably see more videos from me this month that are a little bit out of pattern for me <clears throat> the number of videos how frequently I release them etc etc um, I told you that you know this is the month of my birth and um Indies, as, as I speak to you, my birthday is in two days. I've already claimed it, though. Like, once the new year comes in, I'm good. I don't really need to wait till February, and then the 25th of February, and oh, now it's my birthday. You feel me? Like, I, I claimed it already. But alas, um, accurately, it will be Monday. will officially, you know, mark my birth and um so i'm just kind of throwing some th you know some some of my precautions and stuff out the window and just you know stuff that i want to release i just want to i just go ahead and release it i'm also hoping fingers crossed i don't know when you will see this video or how many of you will see it but maybe later today like in the evening or tomorrow fingers and toes cross troops cross them cross your fingers and toes all right cross fingers and toes I'm hoping to do a live stream there I said it you know if I can get um, you know hopefully I won't have a lot of technical issues and stuff going on and hopefully <clears throat> I, I can do that um, because there's um couple of things that I purposely avoided doing videos on because I thought well that would just be good in a live stream you know so I won't tell you what that is just I'm just saying like hopefully I can um, do that either this evening or tomorrow so just be looking for that fingers and toes crossed all right this video is one that I began um, the other week and this was turning out to be a saga you know um, I was nearly three hours in already you know of prepared work and I just thought nah I'm, I'm losing my my hold on it like I don't I know where I want to go and what I'm trying to do but you know, I don't know, man. I can't really describe it to you. But, whatever. So, I think I'm just going to abbreviate. And really just touch my main points. Of what's important about this to me. And what I'm in suggesting should be important to you. Um... And then just kind of moving on from the issue for now, you know, we're just beginning the political cycle and um, There's a long road to hoe and so there'll be more uh, work to be done and Things to be said about this, but I wanted to come with some preliminaries because what provoked it to begin with I knew I would speak on the political cycle. I knew that but uh, my uh, ire began to be pushed up because I promise you Kamala Harris announced like today and then to the very next day but maybe even by nightfall all I was seeing is these anti these black folks with anti Kamala videos and because of the volume of them it immediately said to me this is not authentic to our people this is collusion this is from the devil this is from this enemy this is from this enemy no question in my mind no question in my mind um, because it was not only the volume of it but the reasoning that was being given suddenly black people care about a fucking pro a prosecutor and oh by the way that's not all she was forget what you think about her personally and all that stuff 
we can't deny this woman's uh, uh, achievements have been stellar. Nothing short of stellar. Nothing short of stellar. And I also knew that anyone who had actually looked at uh, her resume, if you will, on criminal justice would absolutely have understood it and that it's not an issue it's not a problem so throw out if you're somebody who doesn't know what's going on or you haven't come to this yet or whatever the moment you hear people talking about they against Kamala Harris and because of her criminal justice record you tell them to shut the fuck up and that you absolutely know they don't know what they're talking about they have no clue of what they're talking about and then you ask them if they voted for the sniper fire bitch in 2016 huh because the 94 crime bill is directly responsible for the escalation in mass incarceration of African men and women you see that was under Clinton and then his sniper fire ass wife I brought you guys the video of her saying that we were all criminals and we need to be brought to heel. So you ask them, do they vote for the sniper fire bitch? You see? Ease them into it. Say, well, did you, did you, were you disappointed when Hillary lost? Ease them into it. That way you can bite their ass. You see? Just ease them into it. Ask them that. Then that way they can give you an answer without having to, you know, because if you just ask them directly, you know, did you vote for her, they might try and lie ease them into it you know did you want her did you want her to win over trump you know and ease them into it that way then ask them if they voted for the bitch you see so they have no moral ground to stand on against kamala harris at all and i fear that my people are getting caught up in the hype those who are uh trying to influence uh, our people f for the wrong reasons and are being maybe even paid by those who would have a, a, a certain agenda. There's that class. And then there's, the, there's those who are not sophisticated, who are just followers, who hear a soundbite or see even a video title of a video on fucking YouTube and think they know everything. So this is very dangerous, everybody. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. And then all of a sudden, poof, there was this ADOS. You see, African descendants of slaves, poof, out of nowhere, poof. All this is suspect to me. All of it. So I begin by saying, you don't have any reason, politically, to have any reason to reject Kamala Harris and know this whatever we want to get into how mixed she is and who her parents are and she was born here and we don't care not huh, and whatever the fact of the matter is in their white eyes she is not she is a black woman because she ain't white what's clear to them is she ain't them that's clear to them. You understand? So she's a black woman. Period. They're clear about that. And where when, when Barack Obama announced his candidacy in 2007 in Springfield, Illinois, in single digit temperatures in front of 17,000 people, showed up in single digit temperatures just for him to announce that he's running just I'm announcing I'm running <laughs> you understand well this lady had 20,000 people that showed up for her announcement that alone should tell you that's gonna set this devil back on his fucking heels let us stop joining the chorus of this devil everybody and indeed we have to get into a habit of if they hate it god damn it we love it 
That's with anything. You see what I'm saying? God damn it. If they hate it, we love it. You see? And I even prescribe that even in situations where it's something we really don't want to love. If they hate it, we love it. But my point is, there's nobody else that is uh, received the reception that she had received. You know, and then all these other people now trickling out. You don't even know they announced. You know. Oh, so-and-so announced on in their closet on, like, the fucking Daily Show or some bullshit. I mean, just, it, this is for president. If you want the job, you need to go before the people and look like you're president and address the fucking nation. That's what Barack understood. Excuse me. And that's what Kamala understood. And then she did, what did she do after that? She went directly to Iowa and held a, a town hall. Directly. That's the very next thing she did. That's how you roll out a campaign. We're going to see some of, of that town hall that she did in, in uh, Iowa. Because, uh, first of all, you got to put your truth hat on everybody. And you got to move your decrepit, tired, pathetic ass out of the way. And you got to let truth lead you. Now, full disclosure, my issue with her, my issue with her is that she's got a white husband. That's a problem for me. That's a problem. That's a problem. You know, and I'm consistent because as I said, as impressed as I was with Obama, I didn't know Michelle and the girls even existed. I, well, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. And after he finished announcing, and me and my dad were on the phone together, we were watching C-SPAN. And I was like, Dad, he's going to be president. 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 He's going to be. And my dad was like, nah, you know, he's not going to be able to raise the money or they'll kill him. I said, well, if he doesn't win, it won't be because I sat on my ass. And I got involved with that campaign that day. You understand and I became a precinct captain and all that all right but why I mentioned that again is because what sealed it for me was at the end of his a speech and they're playing the little music or whatever and out walks this statue who I did not have to squint at it was a real sister with kitchens and everything and them two little girls. I knew that's a black man. That's a black man because that is a black woman. You see? And once I heard Michelle speak, I really understood she really is the real deal. Because if she had come out and she's all that beauty and statue and all that talent and everything. And then she opened her, up her mouth with this and doing the hair and, and sounding all like this. And, and talking all that, that fucking inclusive talk like we don't know we're black. When this fuck her, I would have fucked this bitch and him. And I'm over all they bitch ass and I whatever. And I would have went and jumped in a, li a river someplace. But she was and is a real black woman. You understand? That told me what I needed to fill in, any blanks I needed to fill in about Barack. Now, that's the same situation with Kamala. Mm, you got a white husband. It's no way you could be 100% down for me. It's no way. You can't. And don't give me love bullshit, everybody. Because I'm going to throw another scenario at you. That we can all understand. You're best friends with somebody. Y'all been hanging out since you're six. Since you're just six years old, you've been besties. Do everything together. You can call each other any time of the day or night. It's all good. You're, you're inseparable. You're one. Then one of you gets married. 
whether you talk about it or not, both of y'all know uh, our relationship is going to be different now. You won't be able to spend the time with me that you used to spend and maybe it's not okay to call you at 3 a.m. anymore now and it's just going to be different now. You know, it just is. Now, that's the same thing here. Oh, you, my sister, that's the girl, that's Kamala, that's my guy. <gasps> White husband. You're not going to be able to be dedicated to me. Because you're always going to be trying to appease what's good for him. So you won't be able to do certain things for me. You see, I would need a strong brother that looked like he would have to even look a certain way. You some saying to be standing by her side. That would really kill it. You see. But whereas this black man could stand there and have a black wife. I don't know if a sister could stand there and have a black husband. You see what I'm saying? But we're going to talk more about her in a minute. I begin with this because I can dispense of him very quickly. This dude is definitely not, he's a what they call a non-starter, everybody. I've never been impressed with him at all. He's too fucking positive. Do you understand what I'm telling you? He's too positive. I like I just got drained even telling you how positive he is like once you watch or listen to this dude like I, I need to lay over you understand me look the the walk even y'all it's everything matters god damn it look at this this ain't a brother walking wait watch the walk Look, look at the walk. Watch the walk. Because I'm not going to do this a lot of times because it's difficult to get it to, you know, to go back. Watch now. Watch. Look. I can't. I can't. And like I said, there's way too much fucking positivity going on. You can never, he can never address directly black folks. It's always this folks are feeling hurt folks are fit fuck folks bitch I don't want to hear about folks cuz that's folklore I want you to talk to me as a black man you understand and for me if I accept you as my brother I got to at least feel like your nutsack looking smell like mine to god damn it and he and he and he's got, he has an older brother his brother looks I then to call to him damn near but here's the thing and their mother is light bright damn near white too but here's the thing his ass his brother is also bald headed and so's he I'm gonna need a mustache we gonna need to go in the, in the in the changing room so I can see some pubic hairs or something I need to see some fucking hair cause to me this bald headed shit is hiding your identity. You understand? Yeah, I can't now. And then your name is Cory Booker. He's too fucking positive. I, he, he, I, I can't. We're, we're going to watch a little bit of this press conference, you guys. Not much because this will send me into the ICU and I won't be able, I won't, I won't be alive to do a live stream. Do you understand me? Like, I'm not joking. He's too positive. <sighs> And I don't know if we'll get to that point in the clip, but he does speak fluent Spanish. That did raise my hair on the back of my neck. Because I didn't know that about him. And he does speak fluent Spanish. But the problem is, is he sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he fucking speaks Spanish. I'm not making that up. Like, I may just have to let you hear that just so you can go, damn Jedi, you really were not lying. Like, he does sound exactly the fuck like Schwarzenegger. Trying to talk English and shit. Alright, so we're going to see some of this. I will get an aneurysm and then I'll come back. All right. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited that you all are here. In Look, at you all are here. You all are here. And then he's from Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. Newark. Oh, in Newark, we do something. Newark. In Newark. In Newark. Oh, my God. I just got lightheaded. Where's my punch? I can't hear this now. This will lay you over. You understand? In Newark, New Jersey, uh, perhaps a Derry great said it. Uh, story for any uh, American city right now. Uh, it's proud to have you on what it amounts to my front lawn. Um, Wait, let's anyway, hear that again. Right up Damn it. Perhaps the greatest comeback uh, story for any uh, American city. Right more. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited that you all are here in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, perhaps the greatest comeback uh, story for any uh, American city right now. And by the way, uh, I did some checking. Newark, New Jersey is predominantly African-American, everybody. Excuse me. Like, why the fuck don't you... Because I, why I even looked it up? Because I'm like, well, if he sounds like that, he must have... Because he was the mayor of New York, of New York, of this fucking Newark, New Jersey bullshit. And I thought, well, if he sounds like that, it must be because he's the mayor of a white city. It's got to be white. Until it wasn't. You see? He has all the makings of a white dude. I'm telling you, I don't believe you're black. You see? So before I even get to the rest of your bullshit, I can't, I don't believe you're black. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Your eyes are the wrong color. I don't see no hair nowhere. Like, I can't. I can't now. Uh, it's proud to have you on what it amounts to my front lawn. Um, but in many ways, it's right up the street uh, that my career uh, started in politics. Well, I thought uh, this too low. leaders uh, who... Or perhaps, I always say I got my B.A. from Stanford, but my Ph.D. on the streets of Newark. It was a bunch of tenant leaders that pushed me into running for office uh, because they really believed that was the best way to make a difference in this neighborhood. I've long since believed that life is about purpose and not position, and I tried to stay true. Started in politics. Uh, it was a bunch of tenant leaders uh, who were perhaps, I always say I got my B.A. from Stanford, but my Ph.D. on the streets of Newark. It was a bunch of tenant leaders that pushed me into running for office uh, because they really believed that was the best way to make a difference in this neighborhood. <clears throat> I've long since believed that life is about purpose and not position, and I tried to stay true to the purpose that brought me into politics in the first place. That's why if you're in my office in Washington, it's a map of this neighborhood that sits behind me in my desk to focus on the folks who first took a chance on me and put me into the game. And what my neighbors are concerned with, and I've heard all around the country, is that uh, people in America are losing faith. They're losing faith? Wait now. Uh, that this nation will work for them. Uh, they're beginning... See, that, that, that right there tells me you're detached from me. Because who you're talking about is losing faith. Because we've never had any faith in this bitch. And no need, no reason to. So you can't be... Because if somebody's losing, that means that one time they had it. You see? Or they have it and they're losing it. You see? We don't have it. So you're definitely not talking about us right there. You're listening down, everybody. Listening down. Listening down. So you're not talking about us there. You see? You feel like they're losing faith in our country. And what else? To believe uh, that, that... Wait, wait. with ...and I've heard all around the country is that... Uh, people in America are losing faith. People in America are losing faith. Losing. So that means they must have had faith because we ain't had none. Uh, that this nation will work for them. Uh, they're beginning to believe. Uh, beginning to believe the next statement. Beginning. Uh, that, that too many folks are, are going to get left out. or le Huh? They're beginning to believe that too many folks are going to get left out or left behind. So he's not talking about us. Because we've been left out and left behind. We're always left out and left behind. You see, this is not the dude. This is not the dude. I mean, we're just better off just voting for a fucking white candidate. You feel me? It's the same difference. 
you know, just pick the lesser of the evils and the one that looks like you might get something by proxy or something and you, and you cast your vote for that person. You feel me? If this is the choice, you know, because they, but, but, but if you support this dude, it's not because you think he's a black person. You understand? Because he's not and he's not going to be he's not going to do anything specifically for African people left behind. They beginning to believe that the forces that are tearing us apart are. But here's the most important thing I can say to you. Because this is something I want to bring up with Kamala. You know, a lot of times black folks want to sit back and bitch about who's not doing and who, who's not doing. Well, what you have to do is you have to organize at the ground level. You understand? So that we have an organization that we are a people. We are a political group. That encompasses the majority, so that we that that means it would it would encompass the majority of African people in this nation. You understand? Maybe you'd even be a card carrying something, so they know when one of us speaks, we speak for all of that. Then you're sitting in rooms with this motherfucker, not asking what you're gonna do. You're sitting in rooms saying this is what you're going to do, otherwise we're not giving you the black vote, because that's what everybody else do. That's what everybody else do. That's what everybody else does. When they talk about Latinos, they talk about all their fucking issues. The Dreamers, the fucking DACA, the motherfuckers that might be born 50 years from now. I mean, they, they cover everything. Because they know that they don't even have to see and speak to each other. They know they're going to do the same thing for each other. They're going to do what's best for all of them. La cultura es primer. You see? So they, so they court them. You got to give them reason to court us. As long as you scattered and can be picked off as individuals and shit, and as long as you Steve Harvey up there talking about we in the money game and all that bullshit, then you're not a group. So I don't need to come talk to you. I don't need to promise you anything. Because you're going to vote for me anyway. I'm still going to get your vote. So get out of my face, black person. I'm trying to get to the white person behind you. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Once you make yourself a force to be reckoned with, they will seek you out. You understand? We have to go and talk to the black community. And it won't be fucking pastors and shit. We will have vanquished they bitch asses into graves. They don't speak for us. They don't. You understand? You need somebody with the heart of the lion like your boy. Hear this now. We just hear a little bit more, y'all, because we're going to get to this. And we're not gonna, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, they're beginning to believe beginning uh, that, that too many folks are, are going to get left out or left behind. They're beginning to believe that the forces that are tearing us apart are stronger than the forces that bond us together. That's the thing that also makes me sick. He said that more times than there are aspirin on the earth. You know, there's more that we have in common that we ha that, that, that there's more that unites us than divides. We have more in common than we are different. Oh, uh, 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 I just choked on my tongue. <sighs> Oh my god, I can't. The forces that want to divide. Fuck that. Only people that say that shit are white people. Because they are the force. There's no difference in the motherfucker that's a head of a corporation, the bitch that's in Congress, or in the Senate, or that's president, or the bitch next door. They are all still the same fucking people. So where's this ultra elite group someplace that just wants to divide all of us regardless of the you said nah. That's not true. But he believes this vomit. You see what I'm saying? And look, your fingernails ain't even the right color. Like I can't, you're not black, you're not, you're not. Uh that, that too many folks are, are gonna get left out or left behind. They beginning to believe that the forces that are tearing us apart are stronger than the forces that bond us together as a people as a country they're just now beginning to believe that everybody so we know that's not us I'm, I'm running for president because I want to address these issues we are a nation a story of who we are everybody who's got he always lights up when he starts telling this when he's this is whole, every time I've heard him say why he's running for president this is the same bullshit he gives you can't legislate morality dumb bitch you can't what are you going to do that that directly affects the people and their daily fucking lives? The white bitch next door is still going to hate me. You understand? 
but he he's not speaking to us when because white people will go for that type of stuff this high arcing language he sees a road to the promised land he sees a land of milk and honey and he oh, i vote for cory we're not falling for that we just don't that works for them remember bush just seemed like somebody i could have a beer with we give a fuck if we have a beer with you bitch where's our check you see so this is but see his demeanor here and and then the vomit that's coming out these issues we are a nation the story of who we are the story of who you are and why i'm running for president everybody who's gathered on my front walk here we are all here because Americans from different backgrounds, different races, different religions, even different political parties stood together, worked together, fought together to make this country stand for something. He said that everywhere. Like the first time I listened to him, he was on The View. I'm like, hey, let me just watch this bitch because I got to see what he's saying while he's running. He was up there for three segments, never said anything but this vomit. Okay, I, when, he came, when, when it was done, you had no idea of where he stood on any issue for anything at all it was just all this kumbaya bullshit i'm over it you know that can be a backdrop message to what you're gonna do but he's making it the forefront and it's it's a failing strategy these issues we are a nation, the story of who we are. Everybody who's Look. gathered on my front walk here, we are all here because Americans from different backgrounds, different races, different religions, even different political parties stood together, worked together, fought together to make this country stand for something. No. We're all here because of 400 years of free fucking labor from us and these sisters that standing here beyond the gate, bitch. But he always says this shit as if it was all these Americans that came together, as if slavery never existed. That we just all came together just on a, a poof out of smoke one day and said, let's make this a great nation. It's that, it's that sickening. What makes us unique and, and different is that we have folks from all over the planet Earth, from Eastern Europe to Asia, from Western Europe to Africa, whose DNA is now on this soil and by us working together, we did things that other people thought were impossible. Nah, that's all bullshit talk because they claim they, what makes us special is our diversity. But as soon as you walk your bitch ass into your job with fucking locks or natural hair, it's a problem, bitch. You see? Because they don't like the diversity and the difference. For them, diversity means you try to act like them. My parents' generation knew that if we came together, blacks and whites, Christians and Jews, we can upend Jim Crow. Huh? If we came together, blacks and whites, Christians and Jews, that that would be the heel of Jim Crow. Because I would say it's black and white only. So he didn't mention nobody else. No Arabs, no Asians, no Latinos, no Natives. No Koreans, uh, keep going. My parents' generation knew the black and white Christian Jew. <laughs> I can't. This dude is so sickening, dude. I can't even, like, I can't. That's why he don't got no, no female, you, you know what I'm saying? Because he's probably been afraid to get him a white bitch because he's trying to pass himself off as black. So, maybe he's just been afraid to get a white bitch, but... Cause ain't no, don't no sister want that. I speak for all sisters. <laughs> I speak for all. <laughs> I speak for all sisters when I say don't. None of our sisters want that bullshit. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Africa, whose DNA is now on this soil, and by us working together, we did things that other people thought were impossible. My parents' generation knew that if we came together, blacks and whites, Christians and Jews, we can up and Jim Crow. We used to be a people that could point into the sky and look at the moon and change it from a dream to a to a destiny. There's no Republican or Democratic way to get there. You definitely don't get there by fighting each other. Be you see, definitely stamp that out. You see? Well, that's why we're in the predicament we're in now, because we didn't fight. You understand? We didn't fight. We didn't fight.
That's the problem. I look at the moon and change it from a dream to a to a destiny. There's no Republican or Democratic way to get there. You definitely don't get there by fighting each other, beating each other down, and dividing mm -hmm. people against themselves. We did those things because we found our common ground. Listen. Now, this is not easy. It's the tough work of, of building. You can tell he's, remem he's memorizing a speech. Look at the eyes, everybody. He's not looking at the crowd. He's looking at his speech in his mind. And, and then hear the words that he's saying. They're so, like made to fit any fucking group I'm staying in front of but they're failing in front of the Jedi you see and so watch this watch this watch this watch this now there by fighting uh, right in fact I was gonna say right he says certainly get there by fighting now watch each other beating each other down beating each other down he's looking through somebody he's seeing a speech in his mind dividing mm -hmm. people against themselves dividing people against and the blinking he's seeing a speech we did those things because we found our we found common ground. Look now, at the eyes. This is not easy. You see? Look at the eyes. This is not easy. And he's trying to deliver it as if it's coming off his dome right now, and it's not. Change it from a dream to a to a destiny. There's no Republican or Democratic way to get there. You definitely don't get there by fighting each other, beating each other down, and mm -hmm. dividing people against themselves. We did those things because we found our common ground. Now, this is not easy. It's the tough work of, of building a great community, or what King called the beloved community. It's hard to do that. But it's about time we get to the hard... What King called the beloved community. Here he goes with the Dr. King bullshit, which lo white people love to hear. You see what I'm saying? Because he kept us off their ass, sadly. Hard work of building this nation to be who we want us to be. Our best values, our best ideals, the best of who we are. We the best of who we are. Like, you're not one of the great speakers, dude. Set your bitch ass down. The best ideals of who we are. All this hierarchy and bullshit. You feel me? I can't. This, I mean, this is some fantastical world that only e exists in the Wizard of Oz, everybody. No policy, nothing going on here. I can't take any more of him. I can't. Five more minutes. That's, that's it. Because I'm trying to move me out of the way of it. It's not about me. It's about you hearing this. But I, I don't think I can stand much more of it. So, five minutes. We need leadership in this country that understands what patriotism means. And patriotism is love of country. And you can't love your country unless you love your fellow countrymen and women. <laughs> Doesn't mean we're always going to agree or some days always like each other. But we got to extend each other grace, less judgment. This is white bullshit. No African person, except for sellouts and coons, want to hear this shit this is meaningless to us and more hard work to find common ground to do the things that other people on the planet earth don't think we can do we're a nation that leads and we've got to get back to doing that together so i'm happy to answer any questions you all want but i'm grateful seriously grateful uh to have you all in newark uh newark. for those of you who only pass through our airport uh take some time to the downtown in newark Nork. His teeth aren't even the right color. I can't with this dude. I can't. And see the new buildings we built, new hotels. Go up the street, see the new supermarket we put in place. Uh, see the schools that are now ranked, rank us as the number one city in America for beat the odds schools. High poverty, high performance. We're doing great things. Senator, my old friend. I can't. I can't. Let me, let me check my time, y'all. We going to Kamala. I, I, I can't. Maybe just the Spanish piece, and that's it. You never invited me to your house. <laughs> Live on love alone. Now, see this and hear this, everybody. Ah, uh, quiero dar uh, muchas gracias a la comunidad latina porque. Now, if you didn't know he's speaking Spanish, you go, is that? And you weren't looking at your TV. You go, is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Is that? Terminator? Say I'm lying now. Say I'm lying. Now. Go back, Jedi. Let the left run your race. And that's right, what hear I intend this to now. do. Hear this. Ah, uh, quiero dar uh, muchas gracias a la comunidad latina porque en mi campaña en esta ciudad. Now, this is a Latino dude standing here with the pen and the pad. 
Look how he's looking at him when he starts speaking Spanish. Your race, and that's what I intend Watch. to do. Watch. Ah, quiero dar muchas gracias a la comunidad latina porque en mi campaña en esta ciudad sin la comunidad latina no 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 tuve una victoria grande. En el futuro este es un país por todo. Es un país con fe, esperanza. Vamos a tener un país más grande, mejor por todo. So con la comunidad latina, parte de la comunidad americana, vamos a tener una victoria grande. No por un candidato, pero por nuestro país. I can't. I just threw up all over my lap. We're moving on to Kamala. Nurse! Now... Like I say, my major issue with her is the white husband. I just can't get past that, you know what I'm saying? And then for my sisters, you know, we know that in our culture, there's, there's, there's been the conversation of, well, when brothers get with a white bitch, it seems like we have more to say when a sister gets with a white dude. Well, I must tell you that that is something that must just come up from a... That must just be ancestral in us. You know? Um, I find myself, I'm more... Uh... Well, I hate it when brothers are with a white heifer. So, I mean, I, I'm probably not the best example. But I, I'll just speak to this to say that for me, this is worse. Because I guess maybe there's a, unsub, there's a, 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 a subliminal subconscious thing of you know that if the brother is with a white bitch that he is doing her so in this case you know a white man is doing you doing her and i just i can't you know that's part of it i'm sure and given they who they are and always have been how could you make that choice and don't give me love everybody you see everybody tries to use this word love to to it's just another disrespecter of truth this word love is another denier of truth i was watching the real the other day and they were talking about weight and um first of all fat bitch has lonnie I, I want her off that show so bad, dude. I'm not going to get into her. But anyway, Adrian makes the statement of, you know, she was, a, it's like my husband, you know, like when we were looking at some old pictures of him, because my husband's recently lost some weight and, you know, he lost a bunch of weight. And um, I didn't remember him being that size because I love him. Bitch, really? I love you, Adrian. But stop it. You see, again, it's just this love. That once you throw that word in there, it's supposed to scatter your brain. It's kind of like when Caesar Milan used to go chit, 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 and kick the dogs, just kick them slightly, and it just throws off their thinking. They forget what they're doing, and they just get in line with whatever he's doing at that moment. That's what that word is. It's a trigger word. Because as soon as she said that, you know, I just didn't, I didn't remember him being that size because I love him, and the whole audience clapped because that trigger word that trigger word you see give me a fucking break hey, hey man Tyrone normally there's no way I would let you would let you have your penis up my butt man but because I love you I don't even feel it really because yeah, it's love You see, so don't give me love. I always tell you that. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. Because in, in, indeed, what really is love would be you would never pick a white man. That would be love of self first and of your people by extension.
Because you can't love your people if you don't love yourself. You see? And I'm sure she doesn't think of this as self-hate. I'm sure she thinks she's in love with her husband. Nah, there can't be love. Have they found friendship? Maybe. But you can find that with a colleague on a job. So that throw that out. You see? Maybe they found camaraderie. They have maybe a couple things in common. A couple things, you know. Yeah, I like soup and so do you. It would be something that frivolous, you know. Uh, and there's some things, you know. Companionship. Things like that. Love? Nah. It can't exist. It can't exist there. So that's my major charge with her. Outside of that... Uh, and so that's my challenge because outside of that I like everything else about her I also like that she was a prosecutor because she's able to give a direct fucking answer to a goddamn question that is direct she doesn't evade she doesn't go to something else if she goes to something else, she goes, out and now to come back to answer your question, boom, and she targets right in on it. I love that about her, you see? And I want to be proud of her as my sister, but like I said, there's that barrier. <laughs> but you, you got a white man. I can't really feel like you my sister girl. Ah, that's my challenge. And then on a petty note, she laughs way too much at her own jokes. <laughs> but she makes you laugh, you know, because she's so joyful and you just like, you find yourself smiling at the end of watching her and you didn't realize you were smiling. But let's see some of this town hall now. And by the way, this was diabolical because this, but this goes to my point that I opened up with when I was telling you that all these people, this explosion that I saw in line of objection to her is definitely coming from white people and being provoked by white people you understand and the right wing if you will which is just another word for white people so uh this proves my point because here it is 2019 and god bless iowa because if it hadn't been for them we wouldn't have had barack now but barack obama and Michelle spent months and months and months and months and months in Iowa. They were never asked about race. But the first question they ask her, they, and they claim, because this is a controlled environment, it's CNN. If I have a question, I should be able to just stand up and ask my question. Why do I need to read my own question? So that's suspect. But the host says, you know, we had a lot of questions about race. And that's the very first question in Iowa, which is 99.9% .9 white. Their main question is about race? Nah, it's not. You see, they want to say right out the gate, remember, she's black. They're pulling that again. So it's meant to say that Iowans are asking this and they're not. This is the fucking media. And then they pick, they, I don't know where they found this chick that doesn't look completely white in goddamn it, Iowa to actually read the question and claim it's her question. See this. <laughs> so we asked a lot of people for questions and we got a lot of questions about race and racism. Huh. Let's get right to our audience. The first okay. question comes from. We got a lot of questions about race and racism. No, you didn't. And that's not a question you would ask a presidential candidate. That's not an issue. Race and racism. Because I already told you you can't legislate morality. You can't. So that wasn't it. It's just that they wanted to pose that to her. The media did. Lindsey Hornbaker. Look, where'd they find this bitch at? And then... Well, listen very carefully because it, what, set up the, what the, he said the question is about race and racism. That's it. Hear it again so you know the Jedi's not making it up. Hear it again. <laughs> so we asked a lot of people for questions and we got a lot of questions about race and racism. Race and racism. 
That's a full statement. <laughs> Let's get right to our audience. The first okay. question. Let's get right to our audience. The first question comes from Lindsay Hornbaker. She is a graduate student in mental health counseling here at Drake University. Okay. Lindsay, your question for the senator. Why does she have to read her own question? But hear this. Good evening. Hi, Lindsay. Senator Harris, racism has always been a problem in the United States, yeah. and the current administration relies heavily on fear-based tactics to justify racist policies that are further segregating us as a nation. We're creating an environment where people feel emboldened to say and do harmful things to people of color, to immigrants, and to the LGBT. Immigrants and LBGT, you see? Fuck that. You don't add immigrants and LBGT to a question on race and racism. You understand? That's reserved for us. You understand? And it's definitely not for the LBGT alphabet shit. Let us be clear about that shit. But I needed to point that out. how Because I've been telling you that they lump that in now. They lump that in all the time when they mention us and race. See this. Where people feel emboldened to say and do harmful things to people of color, to immigrants, and to the LGBTQ community. As the president of a new administration, what would... And she says... People feel emboldened. Well, nobody's doing the shit but white people. You see? Those flotational, levitational words, everybody hovering. We're creating an environment where people feel... People feel emboldened. Huh? We're creating an environment. No. Trump has allowed for the white people to come up out from under the fucking rocks. The mask has been off since 2008, so we're not fooled by any of this. This isn't brand new to us. I'm disgusted they're acting like it's a brand new phenomenon. Like, where have you been? You see? But people are feeling emboldened. No, white people, you gotta point it out. Feel emboldened to say and do harmful things to- Because every week, who is it that's to step down? It's gotta apologize for blackface, that we find they've said something, they've done this, or they've done that, or a teacher has done this, or a police has done it. It's, it's they white ass. To people of color, to immigrants, and to the LGBTQ community. Where'd you get, what the fuck? And by the way, I just found out the other day that this Q is for the f questioning. Get the fuck out of here. As the president of a new administration, what would you plan to do to make America safer for these people? Trying to add this shit to our fucking real suffrage, bitch? Don't do it. Don't do it. Take your paper cut down the street. It will never compare to our head injury and to the LGBTQ community. As the president of a new administration, what would you plan to do to make America safer for these people? It's a non-question. You understand? Because they already have every law in place to protect every citizen from any type of violence and all this sort of thing. I mean, there's laws already on the book. There's nothing a president can do. Nothing. You have to just wait for somebody to do some shit and have some shit in place to deal with them. That's all you could do. So it's a non-question. It's just this is to keep it, the ire up and to add this alphabet shit to black people and our suffrage. Right. Thanks for that question, Lindsay. And you're right. Um, you know, this is something to the point of your question that has always been in America. You know, we have to speak truths about this. Um, racism is real in America. Sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia. Now, she's got to be diplomatic there. You see, she starts out saying racism's always been in America. Well, we start, they, they started with us. They started it with us. Before there was a single fucking immigrant here or anybody who was out here claiming they were some kind of an alphabet. But she has to be diplomatic. You see, and add all this, all these alphabets and trans and all this other bullshit that did, nah. This is something to the point of your question that has always been in America. I appreciate she said that though. And then she goes, we got to speak truth. You know, we have to speak truths about this. Um, racism is real in America. Sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia. 
these things exist in America and we have to speak truth that they do so that we can deal with them. Um, but we have seen in the last two years that there's been new fuel um, that is, is lighting that fire in a way that has been harmful, in a way that we have seen when Charlottesville and, and, and a woman was killed that we've had a president who basically said, well, uh, there were equal sides to this. We have seen what happened at the Tree of Life Synagogue. And, and so we know that, that hate is something that in the history... But you see, she could name the Tree of Life Synagogue. It's one fucking place, and that happened one time. You understand? There's, there's been other synagogues attacked. You know, we know this since we've been kids, probably. But I'm saying, like... There's no system in place for that, that backs that shit up. The hatred of us is written into the fabric of this bitch. And that's what excludes any fucking synagogues and alphabets and anything else you're going to bring to the table. You understand? This is not about denying that anybody else is having some sort of an experience. That's fine. We, we, we can absolutely acknowledge that. But we can also keep the shit in context. And not transgress bounds. You see? Don't tell me you had a head-on collision if, if all it was was a fender bender. Don't tell me you've got a massive head wound if it's just a paper cut. That's what we're dealing with. You see? So we can see your synagogues and your alphabets and all that. And we can acknowledge that you, you know y'all are having some problems because that's fine. But don't come here. Because your shit is not as severe as this over here. And you wouldn't want to be this over here. You understand? And not only that, all that other shit is predicated on some shit you can change, fix, or deny, or hide. I can't hide my blackness. History of our country and currently fuels not only dissension and division, but is, is, is actually can lead to death. And so we have to take it seriously. And here's how I feel about it. And I feel this very strongly. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And how I would lead on this issue is one, to start from that place in my heart, in my soul. Now, she would say that. And I have to believe she believes that. That's not a political statement. We have more in common than separates us because she's married to a white man. I don't have anything in common with a white person. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. You see, because what are we talking about? Well, I, I have a place to live and maybe a white person has some place to live. So does that mean we have something in common? Are you counting that? Is that what is that we're itemizing? You see. So I'm over that. Um, But what I was going to say, too, is I love what I also like about her. You know, sniper fire couldn't find the right formula. She knows she needed to be a man or a woman. You see, with fucked up hairstyles and shit and those bullshit ass military looking suits and them shoes look like they stink and I can't with her. What I like about Kamala is that she's just been a woman. She's, I mean, she's not trying to, well, how should I dress and how should I, she's just been a woman and it don't look like she go too far out of her way to try and even make gussy up her hair and do anything special with her makeup. I definitely see the prosecutor in her, the lawyer. You understand? The the long nights, a lot of coffee type of career type person. You see, you're reading over pleadings and bills and laws and shit. Like, that's a working ass woman right there. Damn, appreciate the struggle. So I get that. You know, but like I said, like I said, I like the fact she's just been present. She's just not trying to, oh, how do I run as a woman? Like she's just being a woman. And I love that. That I love. <clears throat> Which is knowing that when a mother goes to sleep at night, whatever her race, wherever she lives, whatever her socioeconomic condition, she goes to sleep at night with the same concerns. Those mothers go to sleep at night worrying about their babies and. See, this is all throwaway talk for me, even though I get it politically. And it also gives, because white people need to feel like they, because we're not interested in having anything in common with them, like we've been over them. But they need to feel like they have something in common with us. And so this serves that. 
so they can feel more. Ooh, okay, we get, we're all the same. And it kind of takes them away from their inherent evil, you know, for, for a moment or whatever. Whatever the fuck it does, you know. So I get it politically. I get it. I get it. Damn it, I get it. But I don't like it. And their health, worrying about the parents and their health, whether they can get a job, keep a job, pay the bills by the end of the month, retire with dignity. If she's a young student, can she pay off those student loans? The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And we need leadership in this country that recognizes that and understands that and also understands it is against who we are as Americans in terms of our values and in terms of what we aspire to be to ever fuel that kind of division in our country. And enough with these powerful forces that are trying to sow hate and division among us. That is not reflective of who we are as Americans. And we need leadership that recognizes who we are in our hearts and our souls, which is that we do think of ourselves and know ourselves to have more in common than what separates us. But there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. And we certainly, it's gonna start with the top and, and not fueling the kind of division that we have seen. On that. Well, again, that's a political answer. And like I say, I get it. But that's just not reality. The fact of the matter is white people are hateful and they don't need a leadership at the top for them to be hateful. You, they've been doing this shit since before they since they encountered us. And so, you know, it's just it's a throwaway answer for me, really. Like I say, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I can also articulate it for what it really is too, the truth of it. Note, um, you have made criminal justice reform uh, one of the uh, main things you're talking about. As, as Boom. Now, this, this is the other part I wanted you to see because this also backed up what I thought when I start seeing all these videos and stuff online from black people. So, boom, the first thing they hit her with was the race question. Now, and you know, white folks can't wait to give you an uh, 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 got you. So now the next thing he wants to talk about is criminal justice. This is our moment to slam her. But your girl is ready. See this. And especially all y'all motherfuckers that think you hate her because of her criminal justice record. Listen, your ass listen up particularly to this. Because you're hearing it right out of the horse's mouth. As a candidate. And you're also running on your record uh, as a, a prosecutor in San Francisco and as the Attorney General of California. Uh, Riley Fink uh, over here uh, has a question about that. He's a senior here at Drake University studying uh, political science. Riley? Good evening, Senator. Thank you Hi. for being here. Um, Wait, wait, wait. Riley Fink. That's a suspect name right there. You see, if you know what I got, damn it, now. But now they have Riley Fink to stand. He's shaking. He's shaking. They can't wait to ask her this question. And by the way, as if they care about her criminal justice record, which has, which if it were true, only affects black people. You want me to believe that Iowa, which is 99.9% .9 fucking white, gives a fuck about what criminal justice you're getting? That's what makes this ridiculous. And clearly staged. Now, hear this. And watch Riley Fink. Good evening, Senator. Thank you Hi. for being here. Um... Your position, you position yourself as aligned with the progressive movement to make criminal justice less punitive and racist, yet your record as a prosecutor shows that you embrace the tough on crime mentality. You've defended California's death penalty, and as California's attorney general, your office opposed the release of nonviolent prisoners. Think about this. A white candidate, they're tough on crime, and we love that, but he's standing up, this is an indictment, yet... You adopted a tough on crime approach. How dare you be tough on crime? The Attorney General of California, uh, Riley Fink uh, over here, uh, has a question about that. He's a senior here at Drake University studying uh, political. Wait, I just miss, I missed that. I didn't notice that before right now because I was looking at it. Your record. Uh Look at this. What's the thing that stands out in this to you? These fucking alphabets. That's it. I don't even see us. People of color. And that's all in small letters. People of color. Immigrants. And capital letters. LBGQ. Alphabet. XY fucking Z. 
uh, as a, a prosecutor in San Francisco and as the Attorney General of California. Uh, Riley Fink uh, over here uh, has a question about that. He's a senior here at Drake University studying uh, political science. Riley? Shake it. Good evening, Senator. Thank you Hi. for being here. Um, your position, you position yourself as aligned with the progressive movement to make criminal justice less punitive and racist, yet your record as a prosecutor shows that you embrace the tough on crime mentality. You've defended California's death penalty, and as California's attorney general, your office opposed the release of nonviolent prisoners and violated the constitutional rights of various drug defendants. How do you reconcile your contradictory You violated the rights of drug defendants! Think about this question, everybody. Your hair, your hair should be on fire. Think about this. That's the thing they fear the most and think we all are, are drug dealers. And that we're violent. And you would stand your white redhead fucking ass up and ask her about how dare you be tough on crime and how dare you be tough on drug dealers. Which she wasn't, but she will explain her answer. She don't need me to do it. But think about the hypocrisy from this fucking white devil. Oh my god, I can't. You've defended California's death penalty, and as California's attorney general... Yeah, but less racist and punitive, bitch, means you can't fucking just shoot us down in the goddamn street, and you don't just be locking us up for any goddamn thing. Shit, shit your ass down, fucking Riley. Make criminal justice less punitive and racist. Yet your record as a prosecutor shows that you embrace the tough on crime mentality. You've defended California's death penalty, and as California's attorney general, your office opposed the release of nonviolent prisoners and violated the constitutional rights of various drug defendants. How do you reconcile your contradictory past with what you claim to support today? I've been consistent my whole career. Well. Um, my career has been based on an understanding, one, that as a prosecutor, my duty was to seek and make sure that the most vulnerable and voiceless among us are protected. And that is why I have personally prosecuted violent crime that includes rape, child molestation, and homicide. And I have also worked my entire career to reform the criminal justice system, understanding, to your point, that it is deeply flawed and in need of repair, which is why, as Attorney General, for example, I led the Department of Justice, which is the largest state Department of Justice in any state in California. The largest Department of Justice in the fucking country. She led it and implemented the first of its kind in the nation, implicit bias and procedural justice training for police officers. It is why I created the first in the nation for any Department of Justice, an open data initiative that we named Open Justice, for the first time making transparent and showing the public statistics around deaths in custody, arrest rates by race, and making that information available to the public. I instituted a policy around requiring the agents who worked in my division, which is the first of its kind for a state agency, to wear body cameras. I created an initiative back when I was DA, and this is when, by the way, this is the 90s and the, and the early 2000s, where you could talk to DAs around the country. You didn't hear that. That's very important. Go back arrest rates by race and making that information available to the public. I instituted a policy around requiring the agents who worked in my division. The agents that worked in her division. These are not just your cops on the beat bullshit. These are agents. Which is the first of its kind for a state agency to wear body cameras. And they wore body cameras. I created an initiative back when I was DA, and this is when, by the way, this is the 90s and the, and the early 2000s, where you could talk to DAs around the country and you'd mention the word reentry and they didn't know what you were talking about. This is when there was a tough on crime mentality, and I created one of the first in the nation initiatives that was focused on. Boom. Hear what she said? This when there was a tough on crime mentality. You see? So that would be your Clintons and so forth. You see, but you want to stand your white ass up now in fucking Iowa in goddamn 2019 and ask this black woman about being tough on crime? Set your bitch ass down. And the, and the early 2000s, where you could talk to DAs around the country and you'd mention the word reentry and they didn't know what you were talking about. 
This is when there was a tough on crime mentality. So the 1990s. ...who worked in my division, which is the first of its kind for a state agency, to wear body cameras. I created an initiative back when I was DA, and this is when, by the way, this is the 90s and the, and the early 2000s, where you could talk to DAs around the country and you'd mention the word reentry and they didn't know what you were talking about. This is when there was a tough on crime mentality, and I created one of the first in the nation initiatives that was focused on re-entering former offenders by getting them jobs and training and counseling. And it ended up being something that, thankfully, in these ensuing 15 years, is something that is regularly talked about by district attorneys. But back when we created this, that was not happening. On the issue of the death penalty, I am personally opposed to the death penalty. I've always been opposed to the death penalty. And that's not going to change. It is a flawed system. It is applied unequally based on race and based on income. It is something that we know is flawed in that it is a final judgment. But we have seen many cases where DNA has proven that the person who was sentenced to death was not, in fact, guilty. And it is something that, frankly, costs the taxpayers of this country a lot of money and is, is actually would be cheaper to let people spend their life and end their life in jail as opposed to that punishment of the death penalty. So on all of those issues, I will tell you that I am proud of my record, um, but I also do know there is a whole lot more work to be done in this country around criminal justice and reform of the system. We have a problem in this country of mass incarceration. We have a problem in this country of not having adequate response and consequence when young people who are unarmed are shot. We have a real problem in this country about disproportionate application of the law based on who is charged with a crime, what kind of bail is set for them, what kind of sentencing they, they receive based on race. Um, it, and there is a lot of work to do. That's the work that I've been doing also in the Senate of focusing on that, such as a bill that I have that would seek to reform the bail system in the United States and ultimately get rid of the cash bail system. Boom. By the way, Khalif Browder, you guys remember, that's a case we covered uh, quite some time back. <clears throat> he was in Rikers Island, for, Rikers Island for three fucking years. Never went to trial. Was in there for a crime he did not commit because he couldn't fucking make bail. He gets out, ended up killing himself. Remember Jay-Z had gotten involved and was helping him and da, da, da. he ended up killing himself. It was too much and it fucked him up. Don't tell me shit about her fucking criminal justice record. Don't tell me shit. Other than you don't know what it is and you shouldn't be speaking on it. Understanding that is disproportionately applied in a way that causes people who do not have $20,000 in their back pocket to have to sit in jail for what could be weeks, months, and years waiting trial versus the people who have money get out while they're waiting trial. It's Weeks, months, and years. Khalif was in there for three years. Over three years, I think it was. It's an economic justice issue as well as a criminal justice issue. But I appreciate your point. It is a flawed system, deeply flawed, and we have got to reform it and everyone has to be on board. And we can't accept false choices because I think we all realize it's a deeply flawed system. But we also want to make sure that when a woman is raped, a child is molested, one human being is killed by another human being. We also want to make sure there's going to be consequence and serious consequence for those crimes. So I appreciate your question. Boom. That's a full answer, bitches. A full and direct, comprehensive, straightforward, truthful answer, checkable by anybody that wants to go and check it. So let us put down and let us shut down those who get on here with their loud mouths trying to come at her for her record on criminal justice when they don't know what the fuck it is they don't know it the fact of the matter is is whether we like her white husband or not or whether we like her or not don't matter the fact of the matter is she's the one that people are most excited about right now i've heard rumblings that bernie sanders is back in the race again i'm happy about that he should have been president god damn it but i think it's too it's too it's too muddied up now because now you have her out there and now you're gonna have Bernie and then I don't, I don't know who I've, and I think Elizabeth Warren that bitch is running and so it's just too many people running now it's just too many people so it's kind of a handkerchief toss I don't know what's gonna happen I don't know what's gonna happen I don't know
I don't know. And Riley's question is, uh, I'm sure you've been hearing this too. It, yeah, he's got to follow up. This is a criticism we're hearing of you. We're hearing of you. That's the oldest chick in the book. We're hearing. And then I would say, well, Jake, tell me who you're hearing it from. Who are you hearing it from? I always say that when anybody presents you that in life, they tell you somebody told me or I'm hearing or it's some abstract. You nail they ass down in front of you and say, who? Who? Who said that to you? And they will always choke on their tongue because nobody told them that shit. Human being is killed by another human being. We also want to make sure there's going to be consequence and serious consequence for those crimes. So I appreciate your question. And Riley's question is, I'm sure you've been hearing this too. This is a criticism we're hearing of you from the left yeah. as you entered the fray. Um, and they talk about things that you did as attorney general or as prosecutor or, or, or as a district attorney in San Francisco. Yeah. Let me just ask you about one of them, sure. um, which is uh, when you were attorney general, you opposed a, a legislation that would have required your office to investigate fatal shootings involving police officers. Why did you oppose that bill? Just a second. Now, this depends on your lack of knowledge of the... Um, government state federal local whatever all right the premise of the question is is to suggest to your ignorant mind because when they said that you just got a, pi a picture in your mind that she's in the legislature somewhere she's in the congress the state congress she's in the senate she's somewhere in, the, in whatever and she opposed it and she, you know, maybe she had, you know, other lawmakers with her that, you know, struck down this bill or and whatever. That's the visual that just went through your crowded mind when none of it's true. This is just the same way, this, this is the same equivalent as if I seen you in the grocery store and you're just, somebody lives three blocks over from me. And I came up to you and said, hey, what do you think about? weed going legal across the country now and you can say well I don't want to give my opinion on that does that mean you make the law or you can stop a bill no it's just you don't want to tell me what you think that's what this was she was the attorney general everybody hear her answer though so I did not oppose the bill um, I had a process when I was attorney general of not waiting I did not oppose the bill. I had a policy when I was attorney general of not weighing in on bills. Of not weighing in on bills. Hear that again. Would have required your office to investigate fatal shootings involving police. And the, the inference that black folks especially are supposed to be left with. So this is a hit piece on you. You're supposed to be left with the idea that she didn't want her office to investigate when they shot us down in the street. She wasn't for us. They were shooting us down in the street. She wouldn't even let her office investigate it. That's not the fucking what they said. They were, there was a bill that was passed to require her office to investigate um, police shootings. Just same way as they pass a law that your damn car registration went up again you know or something else went up they made the law you just have to follow it now so she's the attorney general they make the law this is what her office is supposed to do she has to abide by that which means she has to investigate police shootings but they're trying to snarl her up on the fact that she didn't weigh in on it or they try to say she opposed it she's saying no i didn't oppose it and I didn't say what my position was, or I, I don't share my position on any bill. Hear this. This is most important, everybody, and we're going to be over it. Let me just ask about one of them, sure. um, which is uh, when you were attorney general, you opposed a, a legislation that would have required your office to investigate fatal shootings involving police officers. Why did you oppose that bill? So I did not oppose the bill. Um, I had a process when I was attorney general of not weighing in on bills and, and initiatives because as attorney general, I had a responsibility for writing the title and summary. 
because I had a responsibility for writing the title and the summary. Now, what does that mean, Jedi? Because we don't know anything. We are ignorant as you have proclaimed. And they are preying on our ignorance. Well, I know this, troops. And that's why the Jedi is here. So now we're going to go to the video that I had done for this before that I decided I'm over it. Where I did actually go and break this down for you. To help you understand fully this answer. Alright. Why she couldn't and what's the whole, what that means. So, again, the question was, why did you oppose this bill that would require your office to investigate fatal police shootings? She said, I didn't oppose the bill. But I had a policy in my office of never showing my hand on where I stood on any bill. She said, particularly because I was responsible for writing the title and the summary. Now, we're going to have a transition and it'll be the old video. I have to make that distinction because they look the same because I'm dealing with the same video. So we're going to go to that now where I break all that down for you. Because as, as, as it turns out, I have the responsibility of writing the title and summary. You see? So, let's ask the White Huffle, where's my damn... What does it mean for an attorney general to write a title and summary? Um, in some states, the title is written by the sponsor subject to the approval of a state official. In other states, the ballot title is written either by the attorney general. Hear that. In other states, the ballot title is written either by the attorney general Secretary of State or Lieutenant Governor. Parties responsible for drafting. <sighs> Wait, y'all. Um, where where was I reading? I said the ballot title and summary are arguably the most important. Point. Wait, now. Overview. Uh, preparation. Of a ballot title and summary. Uh, drafting the initial title, drafting the initial the, the initiative summary. Let me go to the overview. We will learn today, goddammit. We will learn. Okay, the overview. Uh, the ballot and title summary are are arguably the most important part of an initiative in terms of voter education. Hear that again. The ballot title and summary are arguably the most important part of an initiative in terms of voter education. or In other words, in order to communicate to your ass what the initiative is so you can vote on it. All right. In terms of voter education. All right. Most voters never read more than the title and the summary of the text of initiative proposals. You see? <clears throat> so they're the most important. They're the most important for your education. And they're saying that that's usually what voters read any damn way. That's all they ever read. All right. Most voters never read more than the title and summary of the text of initiative proposals. Therefore, it is of critical importance that titles and summaries be concise, accurate, and impartial. All right. Impartial. That means no matter what you think about it, you have to. Your job, if you're writing the title and the and 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 the and the um the title and the summary, <clears throat> your job is not to put in your own feelings and opinions. You're there to educate the voter about what this is about. 
and it must be straightforward. You understand? You don't get to add or try and and and, and persuade or uh, influence. No, this is very important. What they say, therefore, it is the it is the it is of critical importance that the title and summary be concise, accurate, and impartial. Now, drafting the initiative title, all right, because the title and the summary, all right, drafting the initiative title. Presently, a wide range of procedures exists in states for ballot title setting. In Colorado, there is a special ballot uh, title board. Initiative, this, they're just giving an example of Colorado, all right. There is a special ballot title board. Initiative proponents must appear before the board. That means you're proposing an initiative, you gotta appear before this board, which assigns a title, all right? Before the sponsor is authorized to gather signatures, you see? So you can't just come up with your own shit and just go out and start getting signatures to get this on the ballot. You gotta go before this board and get a title uh, which assigns the title before you can go out and, and, and gather signatures. In some states, the title is written by the sponsor. So let's say, you know, uh, the Teamsters are sponsoring a bill or, or, or initiative or, you know, the grandmothers or the, you know, the cookie lady or some bullshit, whatever. In some states, they're written by the sponsor, whoever's sponsoring the bill, all right, subject to the approval of a state official. In other states, the ballot title is written either by the Attorney General, that would be your girl, the Attorney General, Secretary, Secretary of State, or the goddammit Lieutenant Governor. Hmm? And so she would be among that fraternity of people <clears throat> that are going to write the title and the, 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 the title and the uh, summary. So she remained. Uh, she recused herself from showing her hand on what she felt about anything. And actually, you know, politically, that was a good thing for her. And just, just as a, as a, as a, uh, as a, as a matter of scruples, really, because then you can't come back to her later and say, well, you wrote it impartially because we know how you felt on this. You understand? And then she doesn't have to get down in the fray with people trying to accuse and point fingers. She's like, look, you don't need to know where I stand on 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 a um on this just because I'm responsible for it. I could because the title and the ballot could be my responsibility on this particular initiative. So I don't need to, you see. Um. So that's the that's um drafting the initial the initiative title. Now we want drafting the init the initiative sum or the. The summary, yeah, the summary, because <laughs> the title and the summary. All right, so we just did draft the initiative title. I right, remember she's supposed to write the title and the summary. Now, drafting the initiative summary. All right, two types of summaries are drafted by initiative, or two t two types of summaries are drafted for initiatives. The first is the summary that appears on the petition. It is usually drafted by the same person or agency that drafts the ballot title. That could still be your girl. All right. The other summary appears in the voter information pamphlet. That's the shit that comes to your house. All right. Um, so when you see people out, they want you to sign a petition, sign a petition, sign a petition, so it'll appear on that. And the other one is the one that appears in the shit that will come to your house, the voter information pamphlet. All right. In all states, the summary, whether drafted by proponents, the attorney, goddammit, general, which would be your girl, the secretary of state, or the state, or, 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 or other state agencies. Let me read that again so we don't lose the cadence. Um, in all states, the summary, whether drafted by proponents, the attorney general, secretary of state, or another state agency, is a concise statement of the main points of the proposed measure. 
You understand? So we're going to legalize marijuana. They're giving you exactly what the main points are. The shit is scheduled to go from from it's special to it's it's supposed to come into effect on this date. Um, this is the parameters of it. This is how it will affect law enforcement. This is how it's going to be run. Da, 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 all the shit. All right. Because remember, it's supposed to be concise. Um. So read this been written by the minister is it is a concise statement of the main proponent or, or or the main points of the proposed measure. Proposed initiative summaries. Hear that again. Proposed initiative summaries in all states are required to be impartial and non-argumentative. And I would even infer that this non-argumentative doesn't necessarily mean it so much in tone. It can infer that as well. But in other words, you're not writing it in a way that argues your side if you're biased. You understand what I'm saying? So it can be that and in tone. All right. So in all states, this these summaries are required to be impartial and non-argumentative. The number of words usually is limited to in Washington. And okay, and fine. We don't need to know that. All right, that's fine. All right. Now, so what they have set to do, everybody, is to give you the impression that somehow she opposed this bill, this initiative. And she's saying, no, I didn't oppose it. And I don't show my hand on initiatives. <laughs> Excuse me. Because I'm the heifer that writes the title and the summary. So it's a conflict of interest, really. And she's just getting herself into water that she doesn't need to get into if she get, lets herself get down there in that fray and play that game. She's keeping it above board, keeping her chin up, and, and, and keeping it professional and tight. You understand what I'm saying to you? This is the shit you need to throw in people's face. You throw this in their face. This entire video. You need to show the fuck out this video. This is what you need to throw in their face. When they're talking about, but, but it was her, it was just her position on um on criminal justice that I didn't agree with. Shut up, dumb bitch, and sit down. Sat your ass down. Sat. But here's the other thing, everybody. You should know just by the color of her skin. That you can't believe shit that they're going to say about her. That you have an obligation to check every goddamn thing they say about her. Simply because of the color of her skin. Forget the white husband. Throw that out. She's not them. And I always tell you it's an us-them proposition with these people. Us-them. Whether they are left or so-called left or right, it don't matter. White is what's first for them. You understand? Us and them. Us and them. We just want to hear the last part of her uh, situation and then we'll be out and over this. Officers, why did you oppose that bill? So I did not oppose the bill. Um, I had a process when I was attorney general of not weighing in on bills and, and initiatives because as attorney general, I had a responsibility for writing the title and summary. And I want to say this, everybody. It's also disingenuous of the fucking media. He sent his white ass up there, and it could be anybody from the media. They know this. You see? And most people in media are also attorneys, by the way. Can I just add that? Uh, they're some sort of a lawyer. You know, they have some sort of background in law. All right? And so, any media outlet, whether she's sitting up there or not, just if it's on their nightly news or it's CNN or anybody, when this comes up, you could, any of their pundits or anchors up there could say, "Well, you know, she was Attorney General, and they they because they write the title and the and the and the um the the summary, you know, this would she wouldn't have she wouldn't be in a position where she's opposing it. It doesn't matter what her, her personal feelings are on the measure. She's just she's not in a position to affect it or change it or do anything. Like she's just that's not her dude. You feel me? But they don't want to do that, yet they inject their personal shit in every fucking thing whenever the fuck they want to. That's why you have to do your own work. I always tell you, you got to stand at your damn gate and be the captain of your ship. Hear this out. Because yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to be over this. Because like I say, I'm going to be doing more on these, you know, on political stuff in this political season. Um, but I just want to hit this and be out.
Now, let's, it's just a couple more things I want to hear here. So I did not weigh in. So there, therefore, she did not weigh in because she writes the title in some area. Fine. But behind the scenes, I'm going to tell you. Now, she's going someplace else now. Because she's saying. Now she's going to go beyond that. Okay. Like, that's what I did as attorney general. Now. Behind the scenes, I'm gonna tell you who I what I what who I am, like what I what what I feel. Like I'm not attorney general now, so I can just tell you what the what the game is, what what was really you feel me. Hear this. To investigate fatal shootings involving Damn it, I went back to for whatever. Police officers. Why did you oppose that bill? So I did not oppose the bill. Um, I had a process when I was attorney general of not weighing in on bills and, and initiatives because as attorney general, I had a responsibility for writing the title and summary. So I did not weigh in. But behind the scenes, I'm going to tell you, I, I compare my record to any prosecutor, any elected prosecutor in this country in terms of the work that I have done to reform the criminal justice system. I am a daughter of parents who met when they were active in the civil rights movement. Okay. Nobody had to teach me about the disparities in the criminal justice system. I was born knowing what they are. Boom. She's saying, I didn't need, I didn't need to go to law school. I didn't need to do a fucking thing. All I had to do was have this skin, and I knew what the disparities were in the criminal justice system. I was born knowing that. In other words, I'm a black woman. It's certain shit I come preloaded with. Period daughter of parents who met when they were active in the civil rights movement. Nobody had to teach me about the disparities in the criminal justice system. I was born knowing what they are. I made a conscious decision to become a prosecutor because I understood if we're going to reform systems, yes, there is going to be the power that we have on the outside. And also we need to have people on the inside where the decisions are being made, which is why as the chief prosecutor, I was able to not ask permission and to create initiatives that became models. Boom. Now, because remember, she wore she was held different offices at different times. Now she said, as the as the chief prosecutor, hear that. I was able to wait, Jedi. Which is why, as the chief prosecutor, as the chief prosecutor, prosecutor, I was able to not ask permission. I was able to not ask permission. And to create initiatives that became models, the United States Department of Justice. I was able to write initiatives that became models. You understand what I'm saying? So now she's not writing the title and the summary. She's the writing the shit. Saying this is what it's going to be. Somebody else can write my title and my summary now. You see what I'm saying? And I don't know if she was attorney general before or after she was prosecutor or what, what order it went in. But I'm just saying she wore the hats. So she says, as the head prosecutor, I could, I could write initiatives, and those initiatives became models across this fucking land. You see, so let's listen. Like I said, if you want to hate her white husband, or you want to find some other bullshit to hate her over, this won't be the reason. You understand? So saith the knowledge. Which is why, as the chief prosecutor, I was. And she's and she had to ask nobody. A damn thing. Hear this. Able to not ask permission and to create initiatives that became models. The United States Department of Justice designated the initiatives that I created as a model of innovation in law enforcement for the United States. Boom. You see? So don't say she, the sister wasn't doing what needed to be goddamn it done. You see? So where state is she from? California. All right, so she wrote some shit out in California, but that had implication for Ray Ray in D.C. That had prop, prop, uh, implications for Kiwan in goddamn it Iowa, some goddamn place, or Idaho or Arizona. You feel me? Yes. So there is my record, and you know there are some people who just believe that prosecutors shouldn't exist, and I and I don't think I'm ever going to satisfy them. Um, but I will also say that um, there is so much more work to do. And do I wish I could have done more? Absolutely. I think I'm going to leave it there on that, you know. Uh, but that's solid. You know, everything that I presented is solid. 
is solid. It's solid. Solid. You know, um, because I remember even leading up to the day that she announced, you know, then after she if they finished the coverage, you know, they like, we're going to bring in so-and-so now into our CNN desk or our MSNBC or whatever the fuck I was watching. You know, they always start bringing their team to discuss shit. And this is one of the things they talked about. You know, she's going to have she's going to have issues with her criminal justice, her record on criminal justice. And this and the third. Well, the little fucking redhead dandy ginger stood up in the fucking audience and she fucking annihilated him through the throat with her answer and said, I stand by my record. You understand? She didn't run from it. She looked him right in his face and gave him a straight up answer. It wasn't some high arcing language that nobody could understand like you would get from Sniper Fire or any of these other fucking politicians. It was a real answer. Straightforward. Here's the deal. What? A five-year-old would have understood it. She laid it out. Done. She didn't stop, stumble, or stutter. And then you heard it right there. She goes, so that's my record. Boom. You see? So find some other reason to hate her. You understand? They won't be don't 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 give me this criminal justice bullshit. All these ADOS bitches and whoever else the fuck is starting shit and 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 and, and spreading misinformation. You know? Like I say, no, there's no excuse for lack of knowledge these days now, everybody. That's why I have zero tolerance for willful ignorance. Because it's willful. You see, unless you want to tell me you're blind or you can't hear or you can't, you know, you're dyslexic, you couldn't understand or something, you know, I, I can hear you on that, you know, but there's no, there's no excuse now. There's nowhere to hide because you can know stuff within the blink of an eye. You understand when I, even this, when, um, I was first doing it and she talked about writing the title and summary and I'm a very good legal mind. I didn't know that. You see? I didn't know what that was. What's this? What's she talking about writing titles and summaries. What's this mean? I can't. Uh, quick, nurse. You know. Um. So what do I do? In a half a second, I can educate myself. Let me find out what that is right now. Not like, ooh, I have to take a couple weeks and, and, and go and research that. You know, let me go to the library and let me call up a friend and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to do no. Like that, I can know it. Like that. So don't bring me willful ignorance. You understand? It has no place in the face of the Jedi. And indeed, it will be struck down by me. You understand? I always tell you, one of the greatest weapons that I possess is my intellectual firepower. You understand? I know my limitations. If I don't know something, God damn it, I say I don't know it. And I don't try to represent I'm something that I'm not. But when I know it, you better watch the fuck out. Because I will annihilate you to dust on what I know. That I will do. That I will do. That I will do. All right. So do share the hell out of this video, everybody. Tell your people, anybody you come across with this objection to her. I'm be looking at other things to figure out what other objections our people are having uh, to this woman. Um, because in my mind, the only thing that you can really come down to, and I'm I'm fine with it, is the white husband. Like I say, that's gonna be a real challenge for me. That's, I don't know you know I don't know and it's challenging me because I'm gonna have to look myself in the mirror and say what's important to you you know I have to see how she performs in the debates and see how she perform you know the rest of her campaign and ah uh -huh, there means still a lot more to see and that will build a certain uh, gravitas with me you know and then I will hold those two things what she has um, shown me in one hand and the white husband in the other one if I feel like she is the best thing for me to cast my vote for then I'm gonna have to look past the fucking white devil ass husband 
Damn it, I said it. Urgh, nurse! I'll have to do it. I'll have to do it. You see? But what I'm not going to do is just vote for her if she's not the candidate. You know? Like, I believe Bernie Sanders. I believe him. I believe him. You understand? And not just believe him, I absolutely am assured that if he's president, he will do just what he's been doing all the fucking time that you can, you want to go back 40 years and look at what this dude has been doing. He's been doing the same shit. He's not talk. He is action. You understand? So I also have a certain comfort level with him that knowing that if he doesn't get something done or if there's opposition, he's going to fight through that to get that done. I just got to know that she has that same fire. You know? And it's just going to take some more observation, some more, uh, some more observations you know, to really come down to what I feel about her as a candidate, even forget what her family is. Like, who is she as a candidate? Who is she now? Who is she? Who is she? You know, but that doesn't preclude me from, from telling you the positive things that I think about her. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, throw out the white husband. I still think she's a, she's a, a, a beautiful woman. Um, I love a smart woman. I love that y'all. I love that a woman who you could just tell it's her knowledge is just it's it's on her like her skin it's it's nothing it's just it's just it's part of who she is I love that I love that I love that um uh and I like I said I love her prosecutor all of her legal law background and stuff because you see how she talks you know and then later in this, which we're not showing the whole thing because this is, I'll probably show some of it later as we, you know, down the road. But I'm saying, because this is like an hour long town hall, you know, where she's up walking and going in and looking right in people's face and all that kind of stuff. That's not anything that would be new for her. You know what I'm saying? When you're arguing in front of a jury and in a courtroom, it's no time for a withering violet. You got to be, have a backbone. You got to be able to, boom, present your case. So she has that. So she's not a back down type of spirit. Plus all the stuff that she's done, the personal achievements she's made in her life, lets me know she's not someone to give up and quit. You know? Especially, and she's a black woman. You know? And then like I said also, I love the fact that she's just being a woman. You know? I haven't seen her try gussy up, overly gussied up, and it, quite frankly, I think every time See, I don't remember when she came on the radar, I think, when she ran for the U.S. Senate. By the way, she's only the third or fourth black senator since Reconstruction, everybody. And I want to say the first woman, no, Carol Mosley Braun, I think, was the first female senator, black senator. She's, I think she's the, the third since Reconstruction and only the second woman. I think those numbers are right. So just, just just the fact she's in the U.S. Senate is an accomplishment. Because you got all these motherfucking black people in the fucking Congress. You can do that easy. You don't just get into the Senate. You, you don't. You see? So that's also an accomplishment. I'm impressed with her just on a personal level. Just I can I recognize the work she's put in and the accomplishments that she has achieved. So I, it's not lost on me. And like I say, I've not seen her I, ever since she came onto the radar. She's looked exactly the same to me. She always looks like she just woke up and had a cup of coffee and maybe there was a hairbrush and she had to throw her attache case in the car and get to work. I haven't seen any Ferragamo and Christian Louboutin and, you know, brooches and gaudy jewelry and just, I ain't seen none of that. She's just a professional. And I've worked most of my life with women like that. You understand? She's just a straight out professional lady that's just going for her for what she know. I also love that she's always referencing her mother. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. Um, 
I haven't seen the husband. I think I saw a glimpse of him, a picture someplace, but I haven't really gotten into him yet. I haven't allowed myself because I just hate it so much. But I'm going to have to go there. I'm going to have to see who he is so I can know who he is and what his name is and when they got together and read my own inferences into that and all the bullshit. All right. I'm over it. Um, so I'm going to have to find all that out. There's no getting around it. There's no getting around it. No getting around it. You know. And can I just also say, wouldn't it be poetic that as African people, we're the only ones that have produced a non-black president or a non-white president in this bitch. And wouldn't it be poetic if we're the one that's, that produced the first black, fe the first female one too as well. Huh? And she black. You feel me? And also for some of these people out there talking about, oh, she ain't black and she ain't black. Fuck all y'all. Because y'all the same motherfuckers that was calling Meghan Markle black. To me, Meghan Markle is not black on any fucking day. Her mama is black. Maybe Meghan Markle's big toe is black, but that bitch ain't black. You understand? I could see Kamala anywhere in the produce section at the goddamn grocery store, at the bank. It don't matter. I'd be like, that's a sister. That's a sister. That's a sister. Here's another little fun fact, everybody. Her sister's name is Maya. So is Barack's. Barack has a sister named Maya. Wouldn't it just be something? Is it just a fucking coincidence that her damn sister's name is Maya? That sat me down. That sat me down. Because now I need to start doing numerology on her and finding out what similarities are there between her and Barack. Because that's a sign to me. That's a sign. Like the universe was saying, her sister's name is Maya, so is Barack's. Jedi, go and do your work. I just haven't yet. You know? Um, but talk back to me, troops. Uh, you know, let me know um, what, if any, um, value this video was to you. You know? Because I'm not here to waste your time or mine. And, um, you know, if I'm not moving the needle, then I don't need to do anything. I can just go away and wither away and die. So talk back, excuse me, talk back to me. And let me know what, if anything, this video did for you. I'll see you soon.